There are five important lessons I've learned in macro photography that have helped me take much better photos. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you through them. Those of you who've been on my channel for a while will know that I mostly do macro photography either at home in my studio or out and about in the wild. I absolutely love doing it. It's such an exciting part of photography for me, but it has been something that I've only really got into quite recently. So there has been quite a steep learning curve. And I don't mean lessons around specific things like camera settings or flash power or how to use a tripod properly. Instead, it's more about how I actually approach taking the photos themselves. Because it's those things that have had a bigger impact on my macro photography and I think allow me to take better photos today. So let's dive in with point one, slow down. Photography can often be such a frantic experience. Either you're rushing to get a decisive moment as it unfolds in front of you, or maybe you are hiking quickly to get to a good viewpoint just for that beautiful golden hour light. When I started on my macro journey, I was always in a rush. I'd go out for just an hour with my camera in my hand, quick marching through woodlands or down forest tracks, just hoping that the most amazing shot would simply present itself to me. But that isn't how it works, and I rarely got good shots. But then I started to slow down and spend more time actually appreciating what's around me. Spend more time looking at individual bushes, looking underneath leaves, getting down in the dirty ground, getting my knees dirty. And the more I did, the more of that amazing, tiny, natural world actually revealed itself. It wasn't that it was magically hidden out of view entirely, it's just that I needed to spend that time actually trying to see it. And as a result, I actually find taking the photos that bit more relaxing. But I also learned to slow down when actually taking the image. Because before I was definitely in the habit of taking a quick snap and then just thinking I've got the shot. Then I just move on from that scene, get back home, look at the images I've taken and think, yeah, probably could have done better. So I learned to spend more time actually looking at the composition that I had in front of me. I learned to try and critique the image before I'd taken it, thinking about how I can refine it. Maybe it's just a little tweak of the angle or a change in the lighting, but all of those little things started to add up and help me get better results. So by actually taking the time with each shot to really consider what it was that I was doing, I found that my success rate was much better. And that's not specific to macro, of course. My landscape photography became better when I learned to slow down at each location and really think about what it is that I'm trying to do. And definitely my product photography became wildly different when I stopped just taking quick snaps of a product and actually started to really think about how I want to craft an image. But that also goes kind of hand in hand with my next point. Practice does make perfect. Now, this is a rule that is, of course, true of so many different things, but I've definitely found it to apply very strongly to my macro photography. Now, the more times I've gone out with my camera, the more times I've explored trying to find different things, the better my shots get. And I can see month on month, year on year, my shots improving as I am refining my techniques. And that's not necessarily going out and learning new techniques and trying new things every single time you pick up your camera, but instead it's about refining what you already know, making sure that you really understand what it is that you're doing. But each time I go out with my camera and I point it towards a mushroom, it's reinforcing those lessons that I've learned about aperture and depth of field or about how to light a scene properly. And sometimes it is learning by mistakes. A popular video of mine on focus stacking is actually all about how I totally screwed it up because I didn't take enough focus points when I was out there in the field. So when I came back to piece it together, I had big focus points missing in the middle of the lichen that I was shooting. It was a real basic error, but it taught me a huge lesson that I've kept in mind every time I've done focus stacking since. But practicing at home has also been incredibly important. And over the last few years, I've done all kinds of experiments at home with splash photography, with oil photography and bubbles, and every single one of those has helped me refine those skills. And that brings me on to my next point in experimenting outside of your usual genre. 
those bubble and splash shots I showed before weren't just great exercises to try at home. They were actually really exciting projects that resulted in some very different images from what I'd ever taken before. And it really showed for me how thinking a bit more broadly about the sorts of shots I want to take can really open up some amazing creative avenues. So if you've only ever tried to do macro of mushrooms or just insects, then I definitely encourage you to try and give something a little bit different to go. So maybe that could be trying something like the bubble photography or something with high speed flash, like this shot capturing the water hitting this blueberry. Or maybe try giving some product photography a go. Now I do product photography professionally and it is amazing how much crossover there is with my macro work. For one, it relies quite heavily on close up focusing and that's meant I also use techniques like focus stacking and multi-point lighting and set design and of course all of the post-production. It's macro, but with a twist. And all of those extra complications I've had to learn in my product photography have really helped me take better macro photos and vice versa. Or you could try something completely different just for the fun of it. Maybe that's street photography, maybe it's landscapes, maybe it's sports photography or automotive. You'll still learn new techniques. You will understand your camera on a much deeper level. And if nothing else, you might just find that it's a real boost to your creativity to try something a bit different. Having those new creative challenges can often be that boost we need to stay inspired in our photography. I can't speak for everyone watching this video, but certainly for me, I have found that when I felt a little burned out doing one type of photography, I've gone away and I've tried something a little bit different, and that has helped me feel re-energized about all of my photography. It's given me a real kick that I needed on all of the different areas I focus on. If I'd maybe only ever concentrated on one area and become maybe a little bit bored of it, I could easily have just put my camera down and not picked it up again. Next up, don't obsess over gear. Now, I'm not going to be one of those photographers that says the kit doesn't matter, because it does. But it is not the most important element in your shooting. You can spend a fortune on a dedicated pro macro lens, or you can find more affordable third party ones, or you can use cheap extension tubes on your existing lenses. It doesn't matter as long as you can get up close to your subject to get those macro shots. I bought my Canon R5 last year and yes, it is excellent, but it doesn't help me take better photos. It just helps me do it a bit more efficiently. It has features like auto focus bracketing, which no, I don't need because I could just do focus bracketing the manual way, like we've done for years. Do I need the flip out screen? No, it just helps me get shots when I've got my camera down low on the ground. But I took those same shots when I was using my old Canon 6D. And the 6D is a camera you can pick up very cheaply on the second hand market, but it can still take beautiful photos that look as good as any shot I could take on the R5. Once you've got a decent basic setup, that is all you need. It's then up to you to get out there and find amazing photographs. The best images are not taken by the best cameras. They're taken by photographers that really know what to look for in an amazing image and know exactly how they want to capture it. So instead of watching another video review of a different macro lens that you don't have yet, grab your existing kit and go outside and find some amazing photos. But my final point is one that is really close to my heart. Enjoy what you do. With so much emphasis on Instagram and social media trends and real views and all this nonsense, it is so easy to get sucked into this mindset that photography has to be a results-driven process. But it doesn't have to be. It is fun. It is an amazing hobby. It's an incredible pastime that gives us a great excuse to grab our cameras and go out there into the world. And that's something I often have to remind myself because I do my photography professionally and so to an extent I do have to be results driven otherwise my income drops and I lose my home. So for me macro is often that amazing escape where I get to take my camera and I get to explore the natural world and look for these little miniature things going on right underneath my feet. I'm surrounded by the sights and the sounds and the smells of nature. And I don't have to worry at all if the images I'm taking are going to trend on Instagram. Photography is fun.
And when we have fun with it, it's really easy to see your photos come to life because that fun helps us think more creatively. It helps us see more photo opportunities when we are out and about. So we come home with better shots as a result. Photography is what we do and we should love what we do. Otherwise, why do it? Have your camera ready and enjoy the experience of just sitting. But that does bring me to an end of today's video. Um, I really hope that it has been useful and maybe given some of you some thoughts on your own processes. And if it has, I would love to hear those comments in the box below. So please do get in there and have a chat. I would love to know uh, what you think about some of the things I've said today. Uh, but if you have enjoyed the video, do please give it a like. And of course, please consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.